Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live. My name is Miss Young. I am the Director of Enrollment at Heron Riverside High School. Hi, I'm Katie Dorsey, Mrs. Dorsey. I'm the head of school, our version of principal here at Heron Riverside High School. And we are excited to show you a couple of the great things happening in the building here today. There's always great things happening in the building. And one of the um, things I tell Miss Young a lot is, if only folks could just see what's happening in the building all day long, it's so great. So we are right now just outside the gym here at Heron Riverside. It's one of the unique parts of our building. We have a beautiful gym right in the middle of the school, and there's a PE class happening in there. And today, there's this really cool partnership with a neighborhood organization called 913 Sports. What are the activities, Dan? Oh my goodness. They are cycling right now. They're all facing a screen, and they're watching themselves and tracking and monitoring themselves. Looks like so much fun. We're going to take a peek. So come on in. You have to see not only the gym, but what's happening in PE class. They're going to start in just a moment. We can go in and maybe do a, a, just a tour of this fun program. So Ms. Funk is holding the camera. Um, she's helping with our media. All right. Here we go. Let's watch the students start. I'll just some more. Nice and medium. Not your best. Oh, 
director. And we obviously are trying to make choir work even in the midst of some quarantines and some students' Absolutely. absence. They sound so great. Thank you. We work really hard trying to get something together for the spring. Absolutely. So glad to be in here. Check out the space, y'all. We've got this beautiful space, grand piano. It's wonderful. Destiny, tell us about being a soloist. Love it. So I was just saying before we came in that I always love the proximity of this room to the gym and the idea that at Riverside you can do it all. Are any of you, in addition to being musicians in the fine arts department, is any of you also athletes here at Riverside? Oh yeah. Okay. Any of you in a club here at Riverside? Any of you take advanced AP courses? Yes. Yeah, That's why. So That's why. <laughs> These students do it all. And I love that literally you can walk out the door and go ride a bike um, and the gym right under their feet. So such a cool juxtaposition. That was amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry if we interrupted rehearsal. <laughs> So we're at Classical Liberal Arts and Sciences Public High School. Many of our students take Latin as their world language, their foreign language requirement. We're going to have to see Mr. Harris yes. in his Latin class, and we'll see what it means to be a Latin student at Riverside and see another piece of the puzzle. All right. right on the White River. It's frozen solid right now, but it's at about the um, mid midway part of Riverside Park, which is over 900 acres of beautiful city park, one of the largest parks in the whole country. So here we are right in this great location. We were able to renovate and repurpose a really important historic building. Excellent. And then you have your English. I love, you love, he, she, it loves. We love, y'all love, they love. All right, let's do another one. I need two volunteers to come up and do the next verb. It's going to be audio. Uh, Lydia and Kiana. All right, well, Lydia and Kiana go up. Hi, y'all. We're here visiting the Latin class. I have a question for you. How many of you had taken Latin before 
You were in Mr. Harris's class. No one. Yes. So for how, for how many of you is this your first time? This is your first Latin class. Who has something to say about that? What does it mean to be someone who can take Latin and be able to understand it at the level that you are? Anyone have any thoughts for us on that? Seems pretty cool. Fun. Cool, cool. fun. fun. It's another language that you can learn. Like yeah. How, it's learning about like how two people come in class and then you can learn, understand the meaning of everything. It's kind of weird, but at the same time it's cool. Mr. Harris, what are they working on up at the board? Thanks, we are so. working on conjugating verbs. So we're putting personal endings onto present tense verbs because that's how Latin works. We in English, we put our personal endings separate. So we say, I love. In Latin, they would say, amo. Very similar to Spanish, mm -hmm. te amo. Mm -hmm. So they're doing that for different types of verbs. Today, we're really focusing on these types of verbs that have I's in them. Awesome. So again, if you know Spanish, it's like an I R. I know it can be a long answer, so give us just one of your answers. Why do we teach Latin? Just give us one part. I know we can go on forever. No, give us I just, talk all day about give us that. just one little piece of it. Um, I think Latin helps us speak our native language better. So even if that's Spanish, whether it's English or Spanish, it certainly helps you with English because English is based on Latin in a lot of ways. Plus. As you take Latin apart to learn it, you learn how to take English apart, and you learn how to put English back together, and you become a better English speaker, and a better English reader, and a better English writer. And that's really what we're trying to accomplish here. Awesome. Thanks, Latin students. Great job, you students. We're just up at the board. Yes, very <laughs> excellent. They did it perfectly correctly. Good job. So. Let's talk about this one. Remember this? So Mr. Harris said that so one thing that that does is it gives us the critical thinking skills that all language acquisition requires. So how do you break the language down to its individual parts? How do you understand the rules about how those parts are put together? And then how do you apply those rules in all of the situations? So we have students who take that and then they choose to also take Spanish or French. They fall in love with the idea of putting the pieces together in a language, or after they've Latin for a couple of years, they might decide to switch to French or Spanish too. And you mentioned some of our native Spanish speakers. We actually have students who speak many languages beyond English and Spanish too. So French, um, other dialects as well, and love that if you return our building, there's kind of a celebration of language in general so that we can really celebrate the diversity of our school while we continue to learn about it. Okay, back downstairs. <laughs> it's a lot easier going down. Yeah. We've got the snow outside. So beautiful. So we mentioned it in the choir room this young. We're about to go back to an office space where we have a couple students waiting for us. And the question I have for them and what we'll ask them is really, how do you do it all at Riverside? The students we're going to meet are part of those, like we saw in the choir room, students who have done a little bit of everything. And it is certainly something that we celebrate and pride ourselves on, that we can be a true comprehensive high school experience where students can have a really high quality academic experience. Amazing teachers. We have such good teachers. A really diverse student body, but they can also be the athletes, have the clubs, develop a leadership experience. So we'll talk with them at the end here. Ms. Funk, do we have any questions from any of our viewers while we're waiting for our students? We, yes, we did get one. Um, Vaughn asked, do we have a life skills program? We totally do. <laughs> yes. So we have, great question, Vaughn. Um, because we're a public school, we serve all student learners. We have a full special education program for students who qualify for special education. And our programs run the range of um, supporting students with maybe one or two needs, all the way through a full, we call it high school to life mm -hmm. program and curriculum where students might have 
a specifically built out curriculum and program for them based on their needs? Great question. Come on in, Judith. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I can't wait for you to meet Judith. I'm going to let her introduce herself. Will you tell our viewers your name, what grade you are, and maybe what you've been involved in here at Riverside? Okay. Um, hi, I'm Judith. I'm a senior here at Riverside. What I've been involved in is being in the Cine Club. Yeah, say more about that. Uh, it's a, a Hispanic organization. It's like, talk, like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, I guess talk about the main event that the club has produced. So what is one of the main outcomes of the club? Um, having um, almost every, like, um, speaking Spanish um, community together. So good. We've got some more students that just walked in. I'm going to let them say hi, too. <laughs> hi, today. Come on, I want to roll some chairs over. So Yuda is a senior. Talk about one of your favorite classes that you have right now. Uh, one of my favorite classes is political science with Mr. Mann. Mm -hmm. That class is like really fun and that's a new subject. That's something that I'm learning about. So good. Ladies, will you say hi? Hi. Uh, yep, introduce yourself, your grade, and then tell us something that you're involved in here at school. Um, I'm Juventus Rodriguez. I'm, in, I'm a senior. And something I'm involved right now is in Latinx Culture Club. <laughs> and it's about um, celebrating Latin culture, knowing a lot about it. And yeah, it's pretty fun. Okay, my name is Joanna Gama. I'm a senior. I'm in the Latin Club as well. I play various sports. Um, I'm, I do a lot in the school. All three of these ladies do. Did we have any other questions, maybe? None so far. So I will say we were talking about one of the unique parts of being at Riverside, being that you don't have to only be focused on one thing, that we're a small enough school and we care enough, but also is an athlete who starts a club, who also takes fine arts. And so talk about that. What do you see here as an opportunity for a student who wants to be really well-rounded and not just focus on one thing. Joanna, you said you were an athlete. What sports do you play? Talk about that. I play volleyball, basketball, and softball. Yeah, so you're busy, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. And talk about your course load. What types of courses do you take? Um, I take finite, AP Human Geography. I take, I have an internship as well as here. So mm -hmm. I, on my B days, I go for B1 and B2 and I go and help at an animal hospital. Which aligns with future career goals. That's going to be my question for you all um, as we end. What do you want to do next year? So do you want to talk about what you want to do next year? Oh, so for next year, I'm, if I get accepted into my junior college, which is Texas a and the plan is to study eight years and get a master's degree in veterinary medicine. Did you guys fingers crossed? <laughs> Jamie, can you talk about next year for you? I know these college acceptances keep rolling in. Yeah. Um, so I got accepted to all my colleges, well, five that I applied, and um, I'm going to IU Bloomington, and I'm going for a plastic surgeon, hopefully. <laughs> and, so some pre-med work first, yeah. I yeah. need med work, and it's about 10-ish years. Mm -hmm. Love it. You did. How about you? Well, I also got accepted to um, the colleges I applied to, but I'm still, like, deciding which college to go to. I'm deciding to IU or NIU, and I want to go in for business management. I can totally see that. The way she viewed <laughs> it is the behind the scenes organizer of everything. So when, if they're nodding, yeah, when I see something happening, you is always kind of behind the scenes telling everyone what to do, but um, <laughs> effectively, um, collaboratively, so I love that idea of business management. And I feel like the school prepares you a lot for yes. the, like, be in charge or like be a leader. A, be a leader gives you the opportunity to start so many things mm -hmm. that you can like get like it gives you so many opportunities to go out in the world and meet so many new like faces and like bring in like more people and like opportunities to the school. That was actually a question that we got from Anne. She said, what is your favorite thing about Riverside's unique opportunities? So if any of the rest of you, like something unique that you were a part of. Or just what's one of your favorite things about the experiences you've had here? Well, I think one of 
something you need, just like starting, helping starting club, mm -hmm. like the Latina club. I was like, it started freshman year, and it got more involved during the year. Yeah. Um, my favorite thing is the uh, Hispanic culture club that we did um, this year mm -hmm. because we made a, like a culture celebrating. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty fun. We had um, food. Did we even have food? Yeah, we, yeah. Had, we did have food. We had candies, typical candies. And dancing. We dancing. We had posters about um, mm -hmm. the places that we're from. And that was my favorite part. This is really an example of what happens with a lot of student organizations where we have a handful of students, five or six students, who say, we want, we're interested in this. We want this to be something that Riverside offers. And my job is just to say yes. And so we say, yep, let's do it. And we find the right team to support the students. And by saying yes, really ask the students then to step up into leadership roles so that their vision becomes reality. And it's not us designing things that only the adults like. Um, so I think really emphasizes that value of students as leaders and students as are really capable of fulfilling their dreams and realizing their vision if we just say yes. It's a I big part like of our school. Every decision that is made here is it involves the student opinion. Mm -hmm. And like every thing, event or anything just that goes on during the day, it has student involvement. Mm -hmm. Our our um, assistant head of school, Mr. Harper and I work really closely together and anytime we're processing something we always say well, we should just ask the students because their answer is always better than whatever we're dreaming up. So it's, it's true. Yeah. I think we're nearing the end of our time. Anything else, Ms. Funk, we need to talk about before we wrap up our Facebook Live at Hair and Riverside? <laughs> I have two questions. One is for each of the students. What brought you to Riverside? So I would say for me, the location, and I, I've always been going to a small school, so I've just thought it's small school, it's the same thing, and it's close. And for me, um, well, I just came four years ago from Mexico, and mm, it was the location at first. And then when my parents um, saw how um, we were treated as soon as we got into the school, they were like, yeah, you're, just, you're, you're supposed to go here. <laughs> um, I found the school because of my my family, honestly. My cousins, they were like, hey, you should just do this school. It's, it's good. It's good for you. And I ended up here, and I'm glad I did. Awesome. <laughs> I think one thing that um, is worth notice, noting is we have about 420 students, so just over 100 per grade, and our students come from over 100 different middle schools. And so you name a middle school in really central Indiana, and we have at least one student from there. And students who came from charter schools, public schools, private schools, home school situation. Or just international as well, too. Yeah, and yeah. students who are coming internationally, absolutely. Sometimes um, to move here, sometimes as exchange students, yeah. we've had both of those. So that intentional diversity was really important to us. And then Joanna mentioned location. We also are just very conveniently located right off of I-65, not too far off 70 if you're coming from the east side. 30th Street. 30th, yep, and then the 30th Street Crosstown bus, a lot of our students have figured out routes to get them here on that crosstown bus and so it is a very convenient location um, and a part of town that's very accessible no matter where you live awesome just to close us out um miss young i know the first round of applications closes next week if you just want to touch on enrollment and how that works that would be wonderful absolutely so as she mentioned enroll indie round one is coming to a close on january 31st that is Monday. So you still have the weekend mm -hmm. to kind of think about it and choose Heron Riverside as your number one choice. So what you do is go to the, the website. It is enrollindy.org. You set up a profile and basically that is just gathering some basic information. And then you list Heron Riverside as your number one selection. Um, I will say we've been able to um, accept all of our students in the past few years that we've been doing this um, in that first round. So I encourage you to kind of put a little urgency behind it. Think, still have the weekend again, but by Monday, go ahead and um, make your application so that we can see you as a future Argonaut. Love it.
Awesome. Thanks so much for visiting <laughs> us at school. We love giving you a glimpse of the great things happening here. So great. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.